you raised your price target on Tesla. You were at $254. You're, you're now at $278. What was the catalyst? What did you see in here that made you want to move your price target higher? It was a few things. First, the margins were exceptional. And if you recall, over the last several quarters, Tesla's auto gross margins have come down, down, down because they needed to cut price based on weakening global auto sales because rates went up. But now they had an incredible quarter from a margin perspective, much better than anyone thought because the costs of production came down to levels that they've never before seen. That was the first thing. The next couple things were, despite skepticism, they reaffirmed that they would be launching some lower cost models in the first half of next year. And as you played, Elon Musk said they would grow sales probably 20 to 30% next year. What that means, what's very, very important for Tesla stock is that the revenue and earnings growth are going to reaccelerate. And if you follow the growth rates revenue, that stock very uh, closely follows them. So if we see that reacceleration, okay. which we saw since the first quarter, we're going to see Tesla stock continue to outperform. I want to go to margin. This is a company that trades on margin. Even though it's a tech company, it kind of trades on margin like an auto company may. Uh, minus those credits, uh, it beat margin by quite a bit. Uh, the estimate was 16.3. The actual was over 17%. What does that tell you about this company going forward? Does that also settle some of these thoughts that Elon Musk has distracted? We've seen him on the campaign trail. We know he has other enterprises. Does this settle this in the mind of investors, at least in the near term? At least in the near term. Uh, you know, what the company has said, what Elon Musk has said consistently, is that their competitive advantage will be manufacturing, the machines that build the machine. And they continue to show time and time again that they're able to lower the costs of production and be the only or one of the only companies in the world that can make money in electric vehicles. So this is a consistent story behind Tesla. Their cars are great, but what they really have mastered is the ability to make them. And that showed up last quarter. Okay. Let's talk about the broader sector right now on, on two different angles here. Number one, EV stocks, they're up right now. We're seeing Lucid's up, Rivian's up, but the Chinese uh, EV makers, they're also up. At the same time, we're seeing Lyft and Uber down. I, you know, I believe that's tied to some of the uh, uh, robo-taxi announcements they made during the call. Just, just kind of give us some, some color on both of those, how you see Tesla influencing both the EV market and also the ride-hailing market. Sure. So over the last several quarters, people have been concerned that the EV market has slowed down. And that's fair because it has. But we actually put out a, a couple of interesting notes about what's happening in China. In China... ICE vehicles, traditional internal combustion engine vehicles, those sales have collapsed in 2024. And EVs are actually doing well. We think that's a sign of things to come for the Western world as EVs continually proliferate. So that's the first okay. thing. The second thing on autonomy, look, we're massive believers in autonomy. We think the future of mobility is autonomous. We agree with Elon Musk. We disagree with some of his timelines. So he was out there yesterday reaffirming that the CyberCab will begin production in 2026 and traditional Tesla vehicles will be able to operate autonomously starting next year. That's put pressure on some of the ride hailing stocks. So, but we're big believers in both electrification and autonomy. And those are the two areas where Tesla is focusing a lot in the near to medium term. You know, George, very quickly, we got to get out of here, but uh, I got to correct myself. Uh, when I looked earlier, Lee Auto, Xpeng, they were up. Now we've seen they reversed. They're in the red. Uh, these test results, is this putting pressure on their business now? Look, what we've seen consistently from China over the last, you know, call it nine to 10 months, is that EV sales are picking up and ICE sales have collapsed. So the future is electric. The difference, though, between Tesla and many of its Chinese competitors is Tesla can make money. And ultimately, for long-term staying power, that's obviously very important. So Tesla has proven it can not only grow and make a really good product, but they can do it at a price and with a manufacturing that consistently uh, makes profit. So right, that's the that. difference between Tesla and some of its Chinese competitors.